The next item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 12801 in the name of John McAlpine on DG Food and Drink. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I invite those members who wish to speak in this debate to please press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. I would again invite members who are leaving the chamber, and indeed members of the public who are leaving the chamber, to please do so quickly and quietly. Joan McAlpine, seven minutes, please. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. I'm delighted today to speak in this debate, which highlights the opportunities and achievements of the year of Food and Drink 2015. Scotland's ladder is a vital part of our economy and central to our heritage and cultural identity. And food tourism, which I'll talk about today, brings together these different strands, promoting food as a visitor experience and enriching Scotland in a whole variety of ways. I want to talk about some examples of how the sector in Dumfries and Galloway has been making the most of this themed year. Food and drink generate 43.52 million locally and in 2012 employed 964 people in full or part-time jobs. The region is of course a major beef producer and constitutes a large volume of the dairy output in Scotland. And MSPs had the chance this week to enjoy the superb produce from the South West when catering students from Dumfries and Galloway College took over the members' restaurant. Uh, the college is expanding its catering division, which again reflects the potential of the industry, not least in creating jobs and offering apprenticeships. Recognition of the sector's importance has resulted in the creation of DG Food and Drink, led by marketing expert Lorna Young. It's a business information and support service provided on behalf of the Fries and Galloway Council and it caters for all aspects of the industry from production to retail and hospitality. One aspect of this support is Scotland's Artisan Food Trail, which is financed with £15,000 from the Council and £15,000 from the Scottish Government's Community Food Fund. Uh, which is designed to support local initiatives. The De Vries and Galloway Food Trail will launch next month and it includes a website and database for food-related businesses, events and experiences. Other DG food initiatives for the industry include a website to promote farmers markets, which to use a food metaphor have mushroomed in recent years, and next week, the Regional Tourism Conference in Dumfries and Galloway will highlight the potential of the sector as a visitor attraction and encourage local tourism businesses to use local produce. DG Food and Drink is also building up the sector's own ability to market itself and last week funded an event teaching skills in the highly specialised area of food photography. The challenge for anyone embarking on a food and drink inspired holiday in Dumfries and Galloway, of course, is what to miss out, as there are just too many uh, uh, businesses on the list to name them all. Um, and if you pardon the pun, um, I'm just going to give you a taster of what is on offer. Uh, Kilnford, for example, is a large mixed farm at Ingleston, famed for its grass reared belted Galloways, black faced sheep, and free range pigs. It has a farm shop with a famed delicatessen, as well as a restaurant and nature trail which attract visitors from miles around. Barony Country Foods was established in response to growing customer demand for high-quality rainbow trout and ve venison from Barony College's deer and trout farms. And the business now offer a wide variety of fish, poultry and game and operate a traditional Scottish smokehouse and all the produce can be bought online. Similar added value businesses can be seen in Dairy. Cream of Galloway Ice Cream offers a very attractive visitor experience alongside its delicious project, product. And indeed, uh, Dremure Farm Ice Cream in the village of Colin, just outside Zimfries, does the same. There is also the award-winning Criffle Cheese from Loch Arthur, made by residents of the Camp Hill community, which has its own dairy, bakery and brand new farm shop. And I could add to that several chocolatiers, including the extremely creative Abbots in Langham and Liz Cole in Money Ive, who makes the world's first tartan chocolate, which can be purchased in our own Scottish Parliament gift shop. We have Scotland's newest whisky producer, Annandale Distillery, just outside the town of Annan. It lay derelict after closing, like many distilleries, in 1918, until it was lovingly restored by international marketing entrepreneur, Professor David Thompson, and his wife, Teresa. The building itself is of considerable architectural significance, and the Thompsons have spent uh, £10.5 million turning it into a quality visitor attraction. 
It's single malts honour two local sons, Robert Burns, who was an exciseman in these parts. He inspired the Single Malt Man Awards. And Robert the Bruce, who was Lord of Annandale before he was King of Scotland, inspires the more peaty Man of Sword. The distillery's location make it first in Scotland, and it will act as a gateway to Dumfries and Galloway itself. Can I respectfully suggest that the Cabinet Secretary visit Annandale Distillery? He would find it a very satisfying experience and a great way to perhaps start off the food trail himself. While whisky is our best known spirit, the artisan food trail will also feature beverages which are less commonly associated with uh, Scotland. In Langham, for example, Walk Mill produces 100% Scottish craft cider from traditionally grown apples and pears. That business, like other small cider producers, plays a vital role in preserving ancient orchard and apple varieties, and it offers delicious um, day courses uh, in cider making via the Do Something Delicious website uh, that highlights food experiences and gives the opportunity to purchase them to consumers right across the UK. However, Walk Mill, like other craft cider producers, is under threat despite the best efforts of local and national government here in Scotland. The UK currently has a duty exemption for small-scale cider producers, which dates back to the time of Chancellor Dennis Healy. Now the EU wants the UK to drop that exemption, which could put many of these cider producers out of business. And there has been considerable concern about this amongst the craft cider producers, which, as you might imagine, are concentrated in uh, the West Country of England, but uh, it clearly affects Scotland as well. Uh, DG Food and Drink believe the UK government could fight the EU proposition by highlighting the fragile, traditional and localised nature of craft cider production in the response to the EU, which I understand is, uh, is to be submitted quite soon. So anything the Minister could do to help uh, by pointing out to the Treasury that Scotland is also affected by the EU ruling would certainly be most welcome in Dumfrieshire. Although I do understand that it's not something that the Scottish Government uh, can influence because uh, we are um, not a member state of the EU. Uh, in the meantime, Walk Mill is still open for business in Langham, uh, producing cider vinegar and apple juice as well as the stronger stuff. And it's certainly well worth a visit as you make, as you make your way along the artisan food trail. So in conclusion, presiding officer, can I again congratulate DG Food and Drink and Dumfries and Galloway Council and wish them well in their work. Um, with food producers in the region. And as we plan summer holidays or short breaks, can I also urge everyone to consider heading south in this special year to enjoy a taste of Dumfries and Galloway. Thank you very much. Many thanks. I now call constituency members Dr Elaine Murray to be followed by Alex Ferguson. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. And can I start by congratulating Joan McAlpine on securing the debate today and giving us the opportunity to celebrate and promote some of Dumfries and Galloway's greatest assets. Savour the Flavours was very successful in promoting local food and drink in Dumfries and Galloway during the period of its operation from 2009 to 2013. And I and others were very concerned when the organisation did not feel able to apply for continuation of its contract with Dumfries and Galloway. Uh, and I met with the council along with representatives and indeed a number of members met with the cabinet secretary himself to try to seek a resolution which would enable the organisation to continue to operate. So I was sorry when the problems were not resolved. However, uh, the drive to capitalise on Dumfries and Galloway's wealth of fine food and drink has continued under the successor organisation DG Food and Drink. Together with Dumfries and Galloway Council, it has developed a £30,000 project encouraging food tourism during the year of food and drink 2015, 15000 provided by the council and 15000 through the Community Food Fund. Dumfries and Galloway, of course, is already famous for its food and drink. We have some major players. Pities of Scotland and Annan, a subsidiary of the seafood company, has an exclusive contract pr producing all the seafood products sold by Marks and Spencers. Arla Foods UK, a farmer-owned European dairy cooperative involving 3,000 British farmers, has based its Scottish factory outside Lockerbie, where it processes 180 uh, litres, million litres of fresh milk, 30 kilotons of cheese and 10 kilotons of butter every year, the cheese and butter being marketed under the Lockerbie Creamery band, brand. Uh, Joan McAlpine mentioned Cream of Gallery ice cream. It, has, well, it is well known both within and out with uh, Dumfries and Galloway and Mr and Mrs Finlay have for several years developed a visitor attraction linked to their ice cream and cheese production. 
Uncle Roy's Comestible Concoctions, produced in Moffat and established as a company in, in 2004, are now sold across the world. There are many other producers who may be less well known uh, but are equally excellent. Uh, John McCallop, I mentioned Ab uh, Abbott's Chocolates Handmade in Langham and the Tartan Chocolates, which are sold in the shop here, uh, made in Money Ive. We have bespoke cakes produced in Dumfries, the Bi Heck Preserves, produced just outside of uh, Lockerbie. The Dam Fine Cheese Company, that's their title, not me getting excited about it, uh, in Thornhill, Walkwell Cider, as, as John McAlpine said, from Langham, the Little Bakery in Heath Hall, and the Wee Sweetie Company, which I believe is home based in Dumfries. And that's just a few of the um, organisation, the, the, the traders who are involved now with DG Food and Drink. But what could be better than enjoying these products in their region of origin whilst appreciating the countryside and the mild climate, which contributes to the quality of many of them because it contributes to the raw materials which go into them? Many products are now available through the network of farmers markets across the region. These are regular occurrences and the dates of these can be found on the D&G markets website. And many others are available in the shops, restaurants and cafes in our towns and villages. And Joan McAlpine uh, described one which actually is probably only about a mile from my house and is one of my favourite places to buy food. The Food Trail, Trail Project, which is to be launched in the near future, builds on the existing strengths the most popular visitor attractions in the region are all food and drink producers and will feature in the main food, food trail along with the artisan and micro businesses, which are less well known at a national level but pr provide opportunities for new start businesses. Local food festivals and events are being promoted and a series of photography workshops are taking place this very week uh, to ensure that food and drink tourism businesses can advertise their wares as effectively as possible uh, through traditional media and also through the social media. All this requires collaborative working between the private sector, public sector, community groups and industry groups and events organisers. And I think that ability for collaborative working is also another strength of Dumfries and Galloway's food and drink sector. And can I conclude by congratulating Lorna Young of DG Food and Drink for her work in organising the project and also in wishing the Food Trail every success during this year of food and drink. Thank you very much. I now call Alex Ferguson to be followed by Graham Day. Um, thank you very much, presiding officer. I'm absolutely delighted that Joan McAlpine has brought this subject to the chamber, and I congratulate her for doing so, especially as the impetus which I understand led to this debate sprang from a Scottish Government press release last year about the upcoming year of food and drink, which failed to mention Dumfries and Galloway at all. So I'm absolutely delighted to have this opportunity to correct that record. I've represented part of Dumfries and Galloway as either a regional or a constituency MSP since 1999. And over that time, the one really significant expansion of any sector has been in the food and drink sector. Now, the danger of, uh, I find of mentioning specific businesses, as I'm very tempted to do, is that you then fail to mention all the other wonderful businesses that exist. So I'm going to resist that temptation. But it has been truly wonderful to witness the expansion in that sector and to have seen it arrive at its current position, where the region can now genuinely boast a range of food and drink products that can and perhaps should be the envy of many other regions. According to the Scottish Government's own figures on growth sector statistics for Dumfries and Galloway, the total number of registered businesses under the six recognised headings amount to a total of 3,260 individual businesses. But of that total, 2,045, almost two-thirds, are food and drink related, employing, as Joan McAlpine pointed out, some 9,600 people with a turnover of 516 million a year. Now, that would be a pretty important economic statistic in any region, presiding officer, but in Dumfries and Galloway, it is absolutely essential. So the year of food and drink is very well timed from our region's point of view, as indeed is the creation of DG Food and Drink. Now, when I first heard of the initiative, I will confess that I had some doubts because I, I was a huge fan and supporter, as I know other members were, of that first-class initiative that also came out of Dumfries and Galloway, Savour the Flavours, uh, as mentioned by Elaine Murray. Now, that initiative was an organisation at arm's length from the Council, which was held up as a, a benchmark for regional food promotion by everyone involved in the food sector, from the Cabinet Secretary downwards. 
And I actually believe that its success was largely because it was an arm's length organization. And I was very disappointed when the plug was effectively pulled on it due to some accounting technicalities. And I do not mean to infer in any way that anything untoward was happening. It wasn't. But I still think that could have been satisfactorily dealt with if a little more time had been devoted to the problem. But having said that, I do think we, we seem to have moved on from um, promotions of regional food products to a certain extent to the promotion of, nat of national food and drink product. Although I do still believe that regional branding still has a great deal to commend it. And if I have a, perhaps a concern about the year of food and drink, it seems to me that there's a, a great deal of focus on export and overseas markets when there is, I believe, an awful lot more that we can still do locally such indeed as the promotion of food tourism, and that is where I have great hopes for this initiative, DG Food and Drink. Its development of a food trail focusing on artisan food production is tailor-made for the region, and it will be launched in May. It's centred on existing food-based visitor attractions, some of which have been mentioned, and it will also develop a range of activities, such as foraging excursions and community food events. The potential is absolutely immense, and I wish it every success. Um, DG Food and Drink has also effectively taken over next week's regional tourism conference and I just learned this morning and I'm delighted to be able to say that for the first time ever that conference is a complete sellout. But DG Food and Drink is essentially a support base. Artisan food and drink producers are by their very nature small and focused and they usually don't have the time or possibly the expertise to see beyond the varying demands of their business. This initiative aims to provide that support, expertise, and importantly, training and education in a whole host of ways. If it gets it right, the food and drink sector in the region can indeed become the envy of other regions and I suspect other countries. That's quite a claim, but it's also quite an aim and one that is surely worth trying to achieve. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you. I now call on Graham Day to be followed by Stuart Stevenson. Presiding Officer, may I firstly congratulate John McAlpine on securing this opportunity to place Scotland's wonderful larder in the spotlight, especially in this Scotland's year of food and drink, and say she's quite right to highlight the contribution made in this regard by the Dumfries and Galloway area. For in terms of truly effective showcasing of local produce, Dumfries and Galloway has very much been an exemplar for the rest of Scotland. The Savour the Flavours initiative mentioned already by Owen Murray and Alec Ferguson really was a fantastic example of what could be achieved through effective working with producers, chefs, retailers, farmers, markets, manufacturers, event organisers, schools and consumers to raise awareness of an area's exceptional local produce. In an evaluation of the programme's work, it was found that events led by Savour the Flavours not only helped to grow awareness of local food, uh, as a sector, it also encouraged new visitors to the area. Another key issue that the initiative addressed was the perception amongst businesses that local food is expensive and difficult to source. I first encountered the initiative at the 2011 Royal Highland Show, where Savour the Flavours was competing with other regions in a Food Wars type event. I was hugely impressed, and no one should underestimate the impact that the initiative had in promoting local businesses to a wider market. An example of this was Walk Mill Ciders, mentioned by Joan McAlpine, a firm which joined Savour the Flavours when it was representing Scotland on the EU stand at International Green, Work in 20, uh, Green Week in 2013 to demonstrate an exemplar model of rural development. Walk Mill secured its first export order on the back of that event. The Artisan Food Trail seems an appropriate successor to Savour the Flavours. My own area of Angus has itself been making considerable inroads into the food and drink export market, not least of all in the shape of Arbroath-based preserve uh, manufacturers Mackay's. When Mackay's was first bought in 1995 by Paul Grant, it served only the domestic market and then only to a very limited degree. Now, as well as featuring in the sales of six UK supermarkets, its jams, curds and marmalades are sold in more than 50 countries. Mackay's has recently been shortlisted in the export business category at the Scotland Food and Drinks Excellence Awards. I wish Mackay's all the best for the event at the end of May, along with Ogilvy Spirits, who have been shortlisted in the alcoholic drinks category and who, to whom I will return later. There is some good work being done by Angus Council to support what is a high quality and varied local food and drink sector. Angus is the only UK member of the European Network of Regional Culinary Heritage. Started in 1995, this body aims to promote regional food, artisanal product production and distinct culinary tradition to tourists, consumers and retailers. Additionally, the Taste of Angus promotional campaign, which has been running successfully for a number of years, 
uh, last year took the decision to expand into including more business support as well as promotion. Angus Council is also working with Dundee and Angus Convention Bureau to ensure that local food is showcased at local conferences and events. Now, Angus was slow in getting its act together compared to Dumfries and Galloway, but we are now much more effectively profiling the area's rich food heritage, both within and out with Angus. Of course, no mention of Angus and food would be complete without referencing the Arbroath Smoky. And it's been great to see the renowned Smoky producer, Ian R. Spink, welcoming travellers to Scotland with his picture adorning the arrival halls in our airports. It's also pleasing that Smokies are featuring heavily in the promotional work that's been undertaken as part of Year of Food and Drink. The Smokies is listed as one of Scotland Food and Drink's must tastes for the year on its blog, and there is a special Smoky Trail in Visit Scotland's A Taste of Scotland Foodie Trails brochure. The presiding officer, I also want to uh, highlight a relatively new arrival in the food, food and drink scene, and that's innovative potato vodka. Ogilvy Spirits, who I mentioned earlier, uh, has its, has only had its product on the market for three months, but it recently received a double gold medal for packaging and a silver for its spirit at the 2015 San Francisco World Spirits Competition. The business was only launched as a diversification project by tenant farmer uh, Graham Jarron, but what a success story it's become. So, presiding officer, in Angus and elsewhere in Scotland, we're mixing the innovative with the traditional as, in this year of food and drink, we showcase all our country has to offer. And as Dumfries and Galloway led with Savour the Flavours, so other parts of Scotland have followed. But to conclude, it would be remiss of us in a debate on Scotland's food and drink not to acknowledge the role of this Cabinet Secretary in the success story that it has become. Ministers in this Parliament are rightly held to account if areas of their portfolio do not perform as well as you might wish. So let's give credit where it is due and recognise the leadership of Richard Lockhead in this area has been first class, as evidenced by the great uh, increased profile and the growing value of food and drink to the Scottish economy. Many thanks. Now I call on Stuart Stevenson to be followed by Mike McKenzie. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm not sure that uh, when Graham Day referred to uh, the Cabinet Secretary's profile, he will be answerable for that uh, at a later stage. Um, let me join others in congratulating Joan McAlpin in uh, extolling the virtues of uh, the Friesen Galloway and the food that's produced there, and giving uh, those of us from elsewhere in Scotland the opportunity uh, to talk about the important cultural Scottish identity and heritage that comes uh, from food and drink across Scotland. Now, Scottish food and drink is even joined the um, current election campaign. Apparently, uh, someone in the southwest of England, I saw in one of today's papers, was complaining that the Scots were taking over even the full English breakfast uh, down in uh, Devon, where haggis had become part of uh, that meal. I think that's great, because I think haggis is uh, wonderful food. And I suppose even in southwest England, it's probably optional. There are bigger success stories in our uh, food and drink industry. Uh, reports have just uh, come out in the last 24 hours. First time our farmed salmon has cost £500 uh, million. Pounds. And I think there will be very few members of this parliament who have not eaten salmon products that come from processing uh, facilities in, in my constituency. There are small successes as well. Uh, the Barra snail is now the connoisseur's snail of choice uh, in French restaurants not only in France, uh, but in Scotland. The addition of virgin rapeseed oil is improving the quality of uh, cooking and salads throughout Scotland and internationally, and started in the northeast of Scotland. And we now have garlic farms in the uh, Cabinet Secretary's own constituency. Food is an important part of tourism. And tourism is a very important uh, industry uh, for us indeed. Uh, food will bring people to Scotland. And of course, if we don't get it right, it will make sure they don't come back. And when we talk about food, we're not necessarily talking about Michelin-starred uh, outlets, although those are excellent and greater in number than they were uh, in decades past. We're talking about perhaps simple things like the quality of food in a local uh, fish and chip shop. So I'm delighted that when I go uh, for fish and chips to my local uh, outlet, uh, I generally will have the choice of six or eight different kinds of fish, uh, all locally sourced, uh, all absolutely excellent. 
The Fries and Galloway, I've previously referred to the fact that that was where I very first uh, had yogurt in the 1960s. I continue to have fond uh, memories of that. The point about our industry is two thirds of our businesses in food and drink uh, reckon they're going to increase their staff uh, over the next uh, four years. Uh, we've got uh, a significant number of uh, areas are entering into the sustainable food cities. Uh, scheme. We expect by 2016 more than 50 areas across the United Kingdom uh, will have gone on that. Now, one of the things that uh, we dealt with at First Minister's Questions was food banks. And that raises an issue of food being available uh, to people with limited resources. It also raises the issue of food and diet. Uh, the obesity problems we have now is because of the preparation of much of our good quality food. Uh, and if we've good quality food, we can prepare it better, deliver it uh, to, to address that agenda as well. Let me just uh, close, presiding officer, by uh, talking about one dish that you can get in my constituency, which is a modest enough dish uh, costing about a pound. And that is Downies of White Hills Cullen Skink Scotch Pie. This is the most wonderful Scotch pie you will have in the world. So good food can be very affordable indeed. And I hope Downies continue to produce that Scotch pie, entertain my palate and digestive system and those of people across Scotland. Presiding officer. Many thanks. I now call on Mike McKenzie, after which we move to closing speech from the Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, on the last occasion we debated this subject, uh, Alec Ferguson expressed a concern that as we have debated this subject on a number of occasions, there was a danger of us repeating ourselves. I'd like to assure Mr Ferguson that I'm not going to repeat myself on this occasion. And also assure you, President Officer, I'm not going to repeat the offer I made then to invite the then President Officer out on a date. I'm sure you won't be disappointed in that. Our food and drink sector is undoubtedly a success story. Whiskey is the UK's top drink export, and our farm salmon is now the UK's top food export. But although our food and drink travels very well, especially in this year of food and drink, it's best of all when sampled here in Scotland. I'm thinking of the two mackerel I still catch every year, cooked along with new potatoes for supper on the shore, watching the sun going down over a softly sighing warm summer sea. I'm thinking of breakfast of sweet pink, freshly caught brown trout on the shores of a secret lochan, high up in the hills in the early morning, watching the dawn come up. I'm thinking of the best bannocks I've ever had, in Tingwall in Shetland, fresh baked by an elderly lady that I instantly fell in love with. A man can usually only dream of bannocks like that. But for those outlanders not so inclined to wild food, to adventure and to romance, Scotland now has many, many hotels, hostelries and restaurants where you can sample these rare delights and instantly feel at home in their warm embrace, where you can eat in good and convivial company and where you can sip a smoky dram and embroil yourself in the mysteries of a good book in front of an aromatic peat fire. But, presiding officer, our excellent food and drink, our fine and healthy produce should not be the province, the province of visitors alone. It's always been a curious irony that we Scots snack on Scottish seafood in Spain, but ignore it when we're at home. There is much added value to be gained from eating our own fare, supporting our local economies, supporting our farmers and our crofters and our fishermen, supporting our abattoirs, our butchers and our bakers, supporting the whole local supply chain that is only too keen to put wholesome healthy food onto our tables. And in doing so, presiding officer, by reducing, also reducing our food miles, we help save our environment from the curse of carbon, that element that
that's so necessary to life on this planet, but at the same time is capable of destroying it. And that's why I'm glad that we've launched a further food initiative, Becoming a Good Food Nation, to help encourage our public authorities, our councils and our health boards, to encourage them to lead by example, to encourage them to lead by procuring and using local food, to encourage them to lead by signing up to offering fresh, seasonal, local and sustainable produce in any and all of the food outlets they have jurisdiction over. Scotland's food and drink story so far is a successful story, but success can build on success, and there is more still that we can do to build a healthy economy, healthy minds and healthy bodies on the basis of a diet of our own local food. And I look forward to visiting Dumfries and Galilee, hopefully in the not too distant future, and sample some of the fine fare that I've heard this afternoon that's on offer there. Many thanks. Now call the Cabinet Secretary Richard Lockhead, seven minutes only by Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, and as ever, I'd just like to start by congratulating and thanking Joan McAlpine for bringing this motion before Parliament today. And I think between Joan McAlpine, Alec Ferguson and Elaine Murray, they did a fine job for Dumfries and Gallery Tourist Boards, uh, extolling the virtues of that wonderful part of Scotland, which we're largely uh, discussing today. And particularly thanks to Joan for her tour of the food and drink produce um, of that great region. And I can tell her that... <coughs> I have thought carefully about it, but I have decided to accept her invitation to uh, visit one of her distilleries in her area, so I very much look forward to receiving that uh, invitation. I, too, find uh, visits to distilleries very, very satisfying. I also want to congratulate Graham Day for managing to discuss Mackay's jams and Abro's Smokies in the debate in Dumfries and Galloway, which was well done, and also Stuart Stevenson for introducing the Cullen Skink Scotch Pie, which I have to admit I haven't heard of, but I, I do know the company well that he, he says produces it, so I look forward to tasting one of them in due course, and also the processing of Scotland salmon uh, at the Fraserburgh factory as well, which Stuart Stevenson also managed to, to introduce. And of course we found out that the keys to Mike Mackenzie's heart is a couple of freshly baked bannocks for all the people out there. So uh, we managed to do a good tour of Scotland's food and drink industry. And I think we're all very pr proud of Scotland's food and drink industry. It is a sector which is growing in strength and stature, and of course Scotland's reputation for our natural larder is now world-renowned. It's quite amazing when we think that between the years of 2008 and 2012, food and drink turnover in this country increased by over 21%, compared to over, just over 8% for the UK. So 21% versus 8% perhaps because an indication of just how well the, the industry is doing in this country at the current time. Turnover is now just under £14 billion. And again, another fascinating thought is, as Stuart Stevenson alluded to and others, when you think that the UK's biggest food export is now Scottish salmon, which has now broken the £500 million barrier for the first time, and the biggest UK drink export is, of course, Scotch whisky. That really is a huge achievement for Scotland, given we make up just over 8% of the UK population, yet the biggest food and drink exports come from this country. So it's a food and drink revolution that's taking place, and it's got a long way to go. And, of course, we're discussing largely today the food and drink revolution in Dumfries and Galloway. But the fact that in Dumfries and Galloway and throughout Scotland we have fantastic food that's tasty to eat, it's nutritious, it's fresh, it's environmentally sustainable, it ensures that the people of Scotland are very, very proud of the industry and of Scotland's larder. So that is why we did take the decision as a government to designate this year, 2015, as Scotland's second year of food and drink. Food and drink is not just an industry, it plays a key part in our identity, as well as promoting Scotland around the world as a tourist destination, which of course is very heavily featured in many members' contributions. So building on the momentum of the year of homecoming, we are continuing to promote the increased use of Scottish produce across the tourism and events industry. As we've heard, of course, Dumfries and Galloway has much, much fine food and drink produce, whether it's the fresh seafood from along the Solway coast or the Galloway beef from the, the rolling pastures of that fantastic region or the variety of the cheeses, which have also been mentioned by many members that are really at one of Scotland's richest larders in Dumfries and Galloway. 
Again, as Joan McAlpine and others mentioned, as part of the Year of Food and Drink, there are many, many initiatives underway to celebrate food and drink in Dumfries and Galloway. We have the Food Town Day on the 6th of June, which has been held in Castle Douglas, which again is going to be a showcase for the region's iconic products. £4,000 is coming from the Year of Food and Drink Special Events Fund to help make that happen. There are going to be artisan producer stalls, cooking demonstrations, eh, and so on. And also, eh, as many members have mentioned, we have to promote more and more the tourism potential of, of our food and drink in our larder. And food tourism is something the Scottish Government is giving even more attention to than ever before, as indeed is the industry itself. Food and drink currently accounts for around 20% of tourism spend while visitors are with us here in Scotland. And that's why there's now a lot of effort to have much more collaboration between tourism and food businesses and local agencies and others working to help support local economies, because that is certainly a way to generate more jobs and attract more people to our country. There's lots of evidence, of course, that more people spend more money on local food than what they do otherwise, so they're willing to pay a premium if they know the provenance of the food and where it comes from. So it's worthwhile for local food businesses and the hospitality sector in different regions of Scotland, in Dumfries and Galloway and others, to source more local food, because that's what visitors from abroad or from elsewhere in Scotland want to experience, and they're willing to pay for that, so it's good business at the same time. So that's got a big, big future. As part of our innovative approach to promoting the tourism experience in terms of food, we are now establishing agri-tourism monitor farms, and we have one at Lagan Outdoors uh, Centre in Gatehouse of Fleet. So that's a new initiative uh, aimed at promoting agri-tourism. And of course, I just recently received an invitation to attend there, so I'm hoping to visit uh, there uh, in due course. And Scottish Enterprise and others uh, are working behind that initiative in extending the monitor farm concept that exists elsewhere into agri-tourism. We also have the new artisan food trail being established in Dumfries and Galloway. Uh, again, that's being supported. That's receiving £15,000 from the Community Food Fund to assist with its development. And there's going to be match funding from that very exciting and innovative initiative from the local council uh, as well. So again, that collaboration between local authorities, local initiatives, Scottish Government funds and everyone else is certainly delivering uh, dividends. Since we are talking about food and drink in South West Scotland, it is worth mentioning. It is important we do, of course, have the raw materials available for the fantastic ice cream that was mentioned by many members. And I am, of course, speaking about the dairy sector and its importance in South West Scotland. And that is why, as part of the, the Scottish Dairy Action Plan that we launched just recently, bringing together a whole series of measures, at the heart of that is adding value to the raw material. So in terms of whether it is ice cream or cheese or other products, Local economies in Dumfries and Galloway, if we add value to the raw material, that will create many more jobs locally, as well as hopefully more products being developed for the marketplace as well. So the dairy plan and ensuring the raw materials there for the future, which we can add value to, is very, very important for the future of food and drink in Dumfries and Galloway eh, and elsewhere. So I guess I can see that uh, there's not much time left, because after talking about all this fantastic food and drink, I'm sure we all want to go and eat some for lunch. But there's many, many initiatives happening at the moment in Dumfries and Galloway. It's a fantastic area. There are so many fine companies using their ingenuity, their hard work, their imagination and innovation to, to produce new food and drink products, take them to the international marketplace, as well as attract more people to Dumfries and Galloway to enjoy them on their doorsteps. That's fantastic for Scotland's global reputation as a food and drink country. It's fantastic for local economies. And Dumfries and Galloway is playing a huge role in the year of food and drink in Scotland, and I congratulate everyone involved and also Joan McAlpine for bringing forward today's motion. Thank you. Many thanks, and I thank you all. I now suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2.30 this afternoon.